Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. We're discussing Good. about licenses, getting a, a car license or a bike license in Japan. And uh, yes. we, Jeff and I have some funny stories. Uh, when I went for my license, I have an Australian license, and I thought, okay, I'll just go to the traffic center and change it over to a Japanese license. Otherwise, you know, if you've got an Australian license, you're going to get an international license every year. Anyway, I go there and they said, you have to prove that you've lived in Australia for three months. And I, I haven't lived in Australia for three months. Uh, I mean, the max over the 20 odd years is maybe a few weeks, but not three months. So. I said, oh, you can't get a license. You have to do the test. So, hence, I booked it for the next week. They were paid the money. They gave me a book, and I studied it for a whole week. Went back to do the written test, and while I was doing the test, the questions were entirely different to the questions in the book. I failed the first try, failed. So I went back and I said to them, uh, how come the questions were different to the questions in the book? The one that you guys gave me said, oh no, that's the old book. You have to buy the new one from Osaka. So I went, okay, so I ordered a new book from Osaka, it came, studied it for a week, did the test, and passed. Now, I then have to do the course. Now, the problem with the course where the Menkyo Center is, uh, they have three courses, A, B, and C. Now, I know nothing about the courses. They gave me nothing to show me what the courses were. They didn't walk me around or anything. So then I get in the car and this old guy that's uh, an ex-policeman, very nasty guy to him, mind you, probably didn't like foreigners too much. Gets in the car, I get in the car and he goes, okay, start. I said, what course? He said, B course. I said, B course, uh, okay, B course. Uh, I had no idea what A course, B or C course was, so I said, I don't know B course. He says, go. So I went, okay. So I indicate, take off, drive around, he's going, turn right, turn left, turn right, turn left, go straight. <laughs> anyway, I got nearly to the end of the course, and they've got a park car course and you have to indicate so I indicated and I looked in my rear vision mirrors side and back and turned to overtake the car parked on the side of the road and he puts the brake on and the car because they've got two brakes my brake and his brake he put the brake on and it swerved to the right the brake grabs to the right so I swerved out and he said, fail. I said, what? He said, you failed. You went too far out. I said, you put the brake on. I didn't. Oh my gosh. And I was rogue. I was so upset. Yeah. I said, oh, fuck you. <laughs> Got out the car, slammed the door and walked back to the Mankyo Center and he had to drive the car back. That was the first time. Now, you won't believe this, but it took me 14 times to get a driver's license. Wow. 14 times. How, how many times did it take you? Yeah, it took, I failed once, okay, and then I got it the, the next time. No, that's why he's a professor. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, so I went through and I know they've got seven instructors at this uh, traffic center because I went through every one of them twice <laughs> and fail 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 and 
right up on the sixth guy, I was sitting down with this young guy who is actually going to a driving school, but they have to go to the Mankios and do just one course, and then they pass. So I'm sitting with him, and I said to him, What's, what do you do at the uh, railway crossing? He said, I wind down the windows. I said, what? Why? Well, you've got to listen for the train. I said, you've got to listen to the train? Hang on. Uh, these are electric trains, right? They're not steam trains. So they're pretty quiet. So I get back in the car, go to this crossing, and I really, by this time, this was costing me money, time, effort, and I was not a happy <laughs> and I wound down the window and luckily they were manual wide windows so I wound down the window and then I reached over to his side uh, excuse me uh, uh, uh. so what are you doing I said I'm winding the window down he said oh oh and then Stop! Go! Go! Just go! I said, but I've got to wind the windows up, don't I? He said, no, 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 you don't have to wind the windows up. Oh, okay. So, then, what they teach you here in Japan at, a, uh, at the Mankyo Centre anyway, and I assume at a driving school, when you want to change lanes, you have to actually turn around to the back of the car and look. Yeah, 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 yeah. I remember that. Right? Now, in Australia, you would fail straight away. And the reason is, you took the, your eyes off the car in front of you. Now, if he broke, and I'm like this, and then I turn around and ram up his ass, who's at fault? Me. And that's what the Mankyo Centre and the driving schools are teaching young kids to turn their heads completely around and then yeah, change lanes. That's number one. The next one is every road, every road, you've got to turn and look, turn and look, turn and look. And I thought, no, this is stupid. I'm not doing this. This is, this is crazy. So. On the open course, I also failed seven times because I would not turn around and I would not look on each side of the road. So eventually they got fed up with me. I got in a car with this older woman, she would have been, I don't know, 70 or 80 or something, and she was first next to the instructor and the instructor said please go so she goes around and seriously I was I was as nervous as a gerbil in Oxford Street it was just so scary this woman was just unbelievably bad anyway then we go back to the traffic center it's my turn I get in the car I do exactly what I've done seven times before, just do exactly what I've done. And I come back and he says, turns around and he says, Mr. Moen, congratulations. And I said, why? And he said, you passed. <laughs> and I said, w what do you mean I passed? <laughs> he said, you passed the test and I said I didn't change anything I just kept doing the same thing and I was failed six times before he said yes but it's service oh. unbelievable my yeah, license yeah. is service I felt so fed up with me being at the Mankyo Centre because every every Thursday I'd go to the council and I'd say I'm home 
<laughs> that just goes to show, right? It is service like that, right? They kind of take you to your breaking point and then you get it. Yeah. Really? But I was, I was not a breaking point. <laughs> They were at their breaking point because I gave them such a hard time. That's interesting. I just refused to do their stupidity. Yeah. And uh, I can say that I've I've had one accident in the 30 odd years I've lived here. Mm -hmm. One. And I I scraped the side of a car who actually didn't stop at a stoplight. Wow. So yeah, okay, well there you go. I, I got off scot free, of course, but I still yeah. had to pay for my own car repair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but that's a true story, and that's what can happen to foreigners who do a license. Now, I found out why. Why do you need to prove that you've lived in a country for three months before they will change the license to a Japanese one? Well, I finally found out why. Do you know why, Jeff? I don't. Why? Maybe I can guess a few things. Right, guess. To make some extra money, maybe, possibly. Oh, that's close. For retirees. Well, that's <laughs> for close. Re- retired policemen who <laughs> do this kind of work right after <coughs> retirement, uh, or to 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 gain monetary benefit. That would be my guess. Well, very close. Oh, really? The, the reason is. So many young Japanese were going overseas to places like the Philippines and uh, Taiwan and all these uh, easier places to get a license. You can actually probably buy a license. Come back to Japan and automatically change it to a Japanese license. The problem was the driving schools were losing too much money. Gotcha. It all comes down to money. Gotcha. Okay. Right. And so eventually the police decided, because they make the laws here, they decided that from now on all people that want to change their license have to prove that they've lived in that particular country for three months. So it's all to do with money. I see. Okay. Yeah, very right. very yeah. telling. Well, the, the worst part is I, I think I was 45 when I wanted to change my license. Um, and I've lived most of my time here. Okay. So I'm thinking why, why is it that there's no like little leeway for Australians that drive on the same side of the road? Now that's an interesting point. You would think that there would be leeway for people to drive on the same side of the road. Uh, right. You know, and I'm American and we drive on the opposite side of the road and I had to take a test, sure. And I understand that. Yeah. But but driving on the same side of the road. Same yeah, side, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's, it's and our laws are very similar. Wow. Except in Australia the the main law to adhere to is give way to your right. Always. Give way to your right. Okay. Yes. Here in Japan it's give way if you can to anything. But right. the right. <laughs> Unbelievable. Fascinating. I mean, it, it goes on the size of the road. So if you've got a small, thin road and you're on a big road, uh, the other guy's on the big road, you have to stop. Although he's coming this way, you have to stop. And you've given way to the right. Okay? Yeah, yeah. Now that's pretty standard stuff. But here in Japan, it's let him go and go next. Yeah, right. And stoplights, uh, stop stop signs. Yeah, they're unbelievable. Yeah, oh, I know. I was just going to say that that drives me crazy when you're in a, uh, at like an intersection, right? Yeah. And one way has stop signs, and the other way doesn't. Mm-hmm. Uh, of course, you have to stop at the stop sign, but many people don't. They just kind of look and blow through. Yeah, I've been in close calls in that situation. Well, in, in Australia, the the law usually not, but everybody is to it. But at a stop sign, you count five seconds. One, yeah. two, mm-hmm. three, four, five. And exactly. it's clear, go. Right. Here in Japan, it's gone. Uh, kind of slow down. Slow down and just stop on the line two seconds and bang, you're gone. Right. Uh, 
that's one of the issues uh, here in Japan. And that's why I said on my last video with Jeff that driving sucks. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it does. Yeah. <coughs> it leaves a lot to be desired. Yeah. And particularly when you're riding old bikes like this, yeah. you look at the brakes, they're a six inch strong brake. And it's another six inch strong brake in the back, maybe an eight. And it doesn't have much stopping power. And I've come so close to having accidents with drivers of uh, cars. Oh, yeah. They're unbelievable. Wow. And of course, this bike originally never had winkers. Most British bikes don't have winkers or winkers. And I put these on because the problem is you learn at the driving school the hand signals for bikers. Right? This way, stop, go, left, right. That's right. Isn't it? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Mate, it's root learning here. It's through one ear, out the other. Oh no, through one ear, remember it for a week, and out the other. Yeah. And of course, most uh, car drivers do not know the signals now or have forgotten. So that's why I really think a lot of these English bikes should have blinkers to let people know which way you're turning. I totally agree. Yeah. yeah. It's useful. Uh, especially in Japan, they're, they're, all drivers are pretty much used to using blinkers, which is a good thing. Yes. Because you can actually tell what they're going to do and what they're planning to do. Now, in America, a lot of people don't use blinkers, right? Which is it's crazy, I think, actually. Yeah. Uh, wow. Yeah, they, 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 they kind of just drive where they want to. Also, in America, the speed limit is much higher than Japan. The speed limit's uh, 65 miles per hour, right. which is about 40 or 45 kilometers per hour. 60 miles an so, hour. Sorry, no, no. I'm sorry, Yaku, right. <laughs> office, 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 45 sorry. miles per hour is about 40, 60. So yeah, 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 45 miles per hour is about 60, 60 kilometers per hour, right, yeah. So yeah, that so that right. goes through. So, yeah. Australia's the same. Yeah. Okay. But the worst part, I don't know about in America, but in Australia, um, we've got big highways, uh, uh, America would have the same. Yeah. And the country roads, etc. But the problem is you, you might do, be doing, uh, oh, we use kilometres now in Australia, so you might be doing 100 kilometres and then you've got to slow down to 25. Ah, uh, wow. Because it's a school. Oh, man. <laughs> <New> body. <laughs> Okay, gotcha. And that's where the cops always wait. Wow. <laughs> because, uh, like, you're driving at 100, and then most people slow down maybe to 60, and they're right. booked for speeding through a 25. That's a good way to catch people, for sure, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. America, same, same. I, I've got to admit, though, the police here are, are pretty good. Yes, they are. They um, are. I've been pulled over once on a Okay. Uh, because I didn't let this really old woman walk across the pedestrian crossing. Okay. <laughs> and she was going that way, and I was turning left. Okay, right, right. But the law here is you've got to wait until they're on the other side, yeah. and then you can turn, right? Yeah. And I, 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 she's halfway across the road, and I thought, oh, I'll, I'll just drive. Yeah, I got, I got pulled over for that once in a car, actually. Uh, I was, I was uh, yeah, because the, there was a guy standing on the corner at the crosswalk. It didn't look like he was going to cross the street. He was just kind of standing there. Oh. And so the guy in front of me went through. Uh -huh. uh, and I followed him going through. I mean, I saw the old, the old person standing there, right? And he just looked like he was standing, honestly. Uh, and then, yeah, sure enough, the uh, cop caught both of us, the guy oh. in front of me and me, right? And we both well, stopped, yeah. I got pulled okay. out by a bike cop. Did you? Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. Like, yeah. Bike cops love scooters. Oh, do they? Yeah, they, they like you go over scooters? 30, 30 kilometer. Oh, actually, you've got a 10 kilometer leeway there. Right. So I, I usually yeah. ride my scooter at 40, but the legal speed is 30. 
which is pretty slow. But that's really slow. Okay. I yeah. thought it was 50. But it's not. No, no, it's 30. 30? Yeah. For all scooters? For all scooters. Wow. Uh, for, a, for a 50 cc 50 cc, okay. Because I was going, because I had a scooter too. I often go 40 or 50. Yeah. Uh, you're 50, you're in the danger zone there. Wow. Thank you. Thank you. I'd have to call you uh, Jeff Cruz. <laughs> Just call me Jeff Cruz, baby. Because <laughs> I'm John Cruz. John Cruz. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds closer than Tom. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Sorry. John Cruz.